Yeah, that concourse is dangerously close, isn't it? Okay, Women's Cup quarterfinal number three. It is Canada against New Zealand, and fittingly so, it's Canadian Rugby Hall of Famer Gareth Reese to talk us through it. Thank you, Rupert. For Canadian fans, that is not pleasant viewing. There's been some time since the Canadians, in fact, it's going back to 2015 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, before the Rio Olympics, that Canada have beaten New Zealand at this stage. But it's a revamped Canada side, led by Olivia Apps, and a New Zealand side that is scoring tries at will. Massive performances in both Vancouver and LA on the North American stops, winning both those events, and they are in exceptional form. For the moment, let's just take in the sights, the cafe, HSBC, Hong Kong Sevens is back. And I've got to say, the chat around last night, Friday night was massive. The buzz is back. They've got their mojo back here in Hong Kong. Cup quarter final three, Canada and New Zealand, they're going to take the field. With the business end of the tournament here, the last match for these players on day two in Hong Kong, New Zealand, a rare, rare pool loss to France, and that's thrown the whole thing upside down, and it's actually put them on the same side of the draw as Australia, as we've just seen. USA and France have already booked their place in the semi-final for Canada. They smooth through Japan, Spain, and a big match against USA, a good win for them. But it does mean they have this matchup with New Zealand. And Gareth Reese here in Hong Kong, delighted to be joined by three-time winner Carl Tanana. Sorry, it's Craig Chan from Hong Kong will be our head referee. And Carl, a lot of pressure on him, but a lot of pressure on both these teams out there. Oh, no doubt about that. Not many, not often do you see Canada coming through unbeaten New Zealand. Drop one, I think. That woman on six screen is going to be an integral part of Canada. They're going to progress past this quarterfinal stage. Sophie de Goody, for me, is the key. I think Canada have got to have that mentality. We've got nothing to lose. New Zealand, their confidence will be a little bit down. I think Canada, they have to play physical. New Zealand want to go width to width to width and use their speed in terms of Sheree Kaka and Michaela Blythe. Well, a heap of weapons in the white jerseys for this one, and it's Canada in their traditional red kicking off from left to right. Chloe Daniels, who's been a revelation this season, and this little resurgence that Canada's experienced, scoring more than half their points in the last two rounds. They're currently fifth on the series, and New Zealand are second, trailing only Australia. Well, that woman has got five already this weekend. She offloads, nice support. Confidence and a little slow getting across her Canada. Portia Woodman, Wycliffe. Stepping away from two tacklers, thinks about the offload but doesn't. And now they're going to test this Canadian defense. Libby Apps takes away the middle of the field. So they decide to hit a ruck. As we said, New Zealand's attack has been sublime. 32 tries in Vancouver and then 35 a week later in LA in the last two series. Ball pops out the side. Good awareness. And Chirakaka, and she's done it. Often a little mistake like that opens up the defense. Chirakaka, the 29-year-old, scores the big one. It was pretty scrappy, though, from New Zealand attack-wise. It wasn't fluid. Here's the initial break from Portia Woodman. She was actually down for an extended period after that collision. Dropped back to win, and Chirakaka, she's been the catalyst for a lot of things that have been good this weekend for New Zealand there wasn't really much on in that set but she made something happen conversions good so it's seven yeah sometimes you just got to make it happen and what could have been a problem with that ball squirting out oh she's dancing she's she's feeling it well that's Sheree Kako over and over she just loves the atmosphere she loves getting down that's what keeps it level keel she's leading the side with four line breaks got a try there kick is long not gathered it's a knock on first no 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 knock on first the referee chan saying it went off a white hand forward there's canada's chance now to hold some possession. Be interesting to see how they attack Charity Williams is going to go to the edge. She's the speed merchant. One-on-one -on -one with Michaela Bly, but I'd like to see them keep it tight. 
and try and get Sophie to goodies on the far side of the scrum and Volve get her with hitting it up, being physical. Sophie to Goody, captain of the Lions, 15 aside team. Set. Professional with Saracens in the English Premiership. Nice loop around. Oh, it's well read. And snuffed out immediately. The set play. Canada not feeling where the pressure was coming from. And New Zealand back on the attack. Portia Woodman Wickliffe driving through the middle. Underestimated her power sometimes because she has that incredible pace. Ball slipped out wide, the miss pass. Glide this time. It goes forward off her hands. Canada's going to have a chance from deep in the run. Charity Williams. Stop. Goody thinks about a kick. She knows she's on advantage, though, surely. Advantage may have been called off. Wow, that was dangerous, if not. Terry Bear's knock on White. And there is now an advantage knock on. Not much happening here. And the Goody finding herself in that first receiver White. role. Not sure if that's the plan. No, that's scrappy. Very, very scrappy from both teams. New Zealand in the right end of the field, though. But Sophie de Goody just caught in two minds there. Where did the kick? Where did the pass it off? For me, for it. it's all about time. clarity. Carry, carry hard. You spoke about her and Saracens up in England. She's been the best player in that competition because of her physicality. That's a big reason why she's a part of this group. She needs to stamp her Crouch. mark in this game. Well, they've been in five other quarterfinals this season. Three of them they've won. Set. Two of them in the last two events in the series. This is a very much a changed team. They found a little bit of confidence. Again, not much variation in the attack, but they hit up through Norston, but she's had it ripped off her. And New Zealand's going to go over again. Turning defense into attack. Georgia Miller getting it done. Pressure at scrum time, pressure at ruck time on the Black Spoon 7s. This is just the back end of it with Georgia Miller, but it was the turnover and the steal at the breakdown. The Canadians are stuck in their own quarter. Two more off the right boot. Well, clinical start. Five minutes in. New Zealand are all over Canada. Looking to extend that win streak. Well, Canada in their setup don't have any lifting pods. So that, what that does, if you're going to kick off, creates a one on one. New Zealand got some supreme athletes like Shrey Kaka, Michaela Bride, Portia Woodman. Who do you target? They're going to go to their right. One's a bit deeper, so no card required. Whoa, there's contact, but not in the air. And once again, they've jarred it loose. Incredible compete for New Zealand off these kickoffs. Oh, they're just too talented. Sheree Kaka gets her second try. Awesome work for New Zealand. You watch Sheree Kaka. She sees the mismatch with Sophie to Goody. This is the kickoff because they don't have a lifting pod. We're going to say, you know what? Our athlete's better than your athlete. Portia Woodman gets up high. She shows her hops. But in Sheree Kaka, we just see a little bit of it there. Her footwork freezes Sophie to Goody. Goes again on the second effort and does it easily. Two more added, and we know they're great athletes, great attacking players. But given this much possession, they're gonna they're gonna cause problems, and they're doing it here to Canada. Well, it's always the first couple of minutes, and. Both teams are very scrappy in their positions, but what New Zealand did do was get in the right end of the field. So when Canada did make a mistake, or New Zealand made a mistake, they're always going to be pressure on Canada. Another kickoff, another lack of dealing with it by this Canadian outfit. She almost ran that end drive untouched. Hooter sounds. Portia Woodman Wycliffe still going. She's taking on this role a bit more, KT, of the power running, bring it back in field, and sucking in all those red jerseys. Exactly what she's on that edge for. New Zealand will take it to the break and be happy with a pretty good seven minutes. Yeah, clinical stuff. The kickoff's an issue for Canada, but it's all New Zealand. They're up 21 points to nil over Canada. This is the women's game. She has got so much pace.
You don't want to miss this. We celebrate the brilliance of female sport here in Aotearoa. The Women's Game, every Tuesday on Sky Sport. Everyone loves these little guys, but no one loves sharing them, making this moment one of life's greatest struggles. Ouch. Anna stayed at this hotel and paid this price. Laura stayed in the same hotel and paid a lot less. How? Well, Anna found the hotel on her usual website. Laura used Trivago to compare offers from major booking sites and found a great deal. Hotel Trivago. One more cheese? You'll love Domino's new cheese volcano. Gooey, melty, dippable cheese in a pull-apart crust that makes any Domino's dish even more cheese-alicious. Get more from Domino's. Get an instant flawless glow with Maybelline Instant Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Foundation. $19.99 at Chemist Warehouse. It primes, conceals, highlights and contours for an instant glow. Live, look, feel fabulous at Chemist Warehouse. We are back at the Cafe HSBC Hong Kong Sevens. It's quarter, cup quarterfinal time for the women. USA and France have already booked their places. We've got Australia and Japan to come, but right now, it's New Zealand putting their hands up in cup quarterfinal. Number three, dominating Canada with all the possession and all the points. 21 points to nil. New Zealand in the white jerseys. Going to kick it. To their right, and why not? They've won possession off every kickoff so far. Finally, it's gathered by Chrissy Scurfield, the 20 year old. There's a penalty for Canada. Can they shift the momentum here? Olivia Apps on the ball. And no need to rush here for Canada either. Here, at Reese. Looks like Sophie De Goody. She's going to be the one to go to the sideline. She's got the massive boot. Just get it over. Doesn't matter how. Yeah. Not the best effort there, but a proper kicker, a goal kicker for the 15 side. It's always nice to see a number eight step up and stick one through. Oh, always. What a like here. First, win the ball, then get it out to Charity Williams, then set it up for Sophie to Goody. Second phase. So we got Julia Greenshields. Great to see her back in the Canada jersey. She's God, leading man, the. Been lost straight first, that lost one wasn't straight. Line, Greenshields leading the tackle counts well, for her lost team. Made her debut way straight. back in 2013 in Houston. A few of the New Zealand girls did as well. Tyler King, who we had in Dubai in 2013, and Blythe and Woodman Wycliffe, and also way back then. Seen this game change on the women's side. Massively, absolutely massively. So competitive now. New Zealand looking to ice this quarter final early. Of course, New Zealand winning here the first time the women were part of the series event in Hong Kong. New Zealand want to back that up. That one's knocked on. See, I still confuses me that call. You got one of the fastest players on the circuit, and you're hitting her on the short ball. But that's a hit up. I think that's what Porsche Woodman's there to do. Maybe try and variations for sure. But that's an important moment in this game. So that's good hold defensively from Canada. Yeah, Stacey Walker's coming on. Marshall Woodman Wycliffe's going to have a breather. And Waka at 28. She's got two tries already here in Hong Kong. See if she can add to the tally. And Piper Logan to introduce the ball. She picks up. Goes against the grain. This is better energy from Canada. Chloe Daniels brought down. Apps. Again, New Zealand dominating and dictating and taking away the midfield. So Apps is forced to ruck. Norston, the youngster, gets it to the goody. Only 24 herself, but has really been leading the women's program for a few years now. Again, midfield pressure and all sorts of trouble for Chrissy Skirfield. Kind of just a little bit dazed here in that execution that their head coach, Jack Henry, talked about. That's a better ball leading Charity Williams into space. She's not going around the outside of Blythe. There's a battle that's been going on for a few years. This is better from Canada. They put some phases together. 
Two and a half minutes played in the second half. Offloads a little low and it's been knocked on. Oh, but that's the blueprint for that's Canada. It's Sophie De Goody hitting those angles. The option was there. It was just the execution didn't come off. This goes to hand. She's over, unfortunate there. Porsche supporting there. Nuku and Felix Holtham on for New Zealand. That's great line speed, though, from the Black Fern Sevens. Really pressurizing this Canadian attack. And now, can they ice this one this time? Tyler King to introduce at the scrum. She's got one receiver who moves into open play. And that is Nuku. Passes behind by, but she does well to gather it. She's showing her strength now. Canada trying to take the space and time away. That one spilled. Well, it's a bit of a scrappy affair for a quarterfinal. Yeah, and as a coach making those changes, Corey Swinney won't be happy with this. He expects the bench to come on and lift the level. So Jasmine Felix Hotham there just taking her eyes off the ball. I know you want to have an immediate injection, but the main thing in these big games is just to be clear and not make mistakes and do your job and don't overplay. Charity Williams, Olympic bronze medalist with Canada in the Rio in 2016. Back in the fold and contributing to this resurgence for Canadian women's seven. Options both sides. She's in behind now. Let's see if she can get the ball on the move. Running across the face. New Zealand bending, but don't break for the moment. Daniels looks right. She is leading this group in try assists. Quite incredible stats, actually. There is Williams. Finally, is she going to reach for the line? No. Brought down, three minutes short. Options out wide. A little bit of hesitation. Will it cost her? Tackle. Tackle complete because she's on the ground. Better from Canada. Quick tap and go. Fancy Bermudez. She's held up. We're going to have a little look here. I'm off. I thought we got a ground name, but you got a high tackle, correct? Again, 33. So it's no try, but it's a high tackle against 33 white. No penalty try, it's high tackle. Yeah, good use as the refereeing team there. Got to go quick again. Penalty only. A little bit of indecision there, but they do get it and they go wide. Williams. Schofield. She's got the power and pace. She gets her hands free. Offloads to Shalea Valenzuela. And Canada's on the board and got some hope here. Well, here we go. The body language has changed right now for the Canadians. Conversion's got to be important. Finally, they got it to the edge. One missed tackle from New Zealand. And there's the overlap. And there's the execution they needed. Nice strike from the side, but just slides across the front. So Valenzuela's on the board, but only five for Canada. Cup quarterfinal here. Canada chasing New Zealand. Still one more cup quarterfinal to come. And that's Australia and Japan, but in full flight. Mahina Paul, beautiful individual effort from deep inside her own end. He just backs herself straight away as soon as she gets the ball, does Mahina Paul. Goes across the face onto the fence, one straight and step there, just the left foot, change of direction. And then Paul is gone. I like the way she made the decision early, just to go. Well, you mentioned head coach for New Zealand, Corey Sweeney, what he wants for his bench players. Mahina Paul's come off the bench in immediate impact. really pop the bubble of the Canadians to see now with their energy levels. Both these teams, of course, who qualified for the Paris Olympics. It's going to be fantastic. Rugby Sevens is back. The third attempt. Backwards. Tackle not rolling away. Hans Ramirez wants to go quickly, and she does. Go out to midfield. Look at great feet from Piper Logan. 
former gymnast and acrobat. Pass to no one. Chloe Daniels not quite hitting her target. This is a bit scrappy. Cherry Williams jumps on and says, let's regroup from back here. And she's been penalized. New Zealand obviously going to win this game now. I don't think you push it too much. I can't wait, Brent. Well, not a huge Honestly, spectacle this cup quarterfinal, but it's going to be job done for New Zealand. A little chance to run through a set move with some of the substitute players on the field. Didn't quite come off as they wanted. But they've done the work. They put the effort in, and their class has really shone through, and they keep that record alive. Canada not able to get their number, and Blythe's had enough. So comprehensive in the end, New Zealand 26 points to five, winners over Canada. And New Zealand will now have the luxury of watching Australia and Japan in the fourth cup quarterfinal.